When people think of tornadoes from a general perspective, they would likely think of big, powerful, dangerous, destructive clouds that connect to the ground. But not all tornadoes are like that. Most of the time, they are generally weak, causing minor roof damage. We call these EF0 and EF1 tornadoes. The EF4s and EF5s are the stereotypical tornadoes that most people think of and what we see in the movies and stories. Thankfully though, these ones don't occur that often, but we do expect them yearly whether they're memorable or deadly or not. So which ones are the strongest of the strongest? Meaning like, downright powerful, hard to imagine. If so, then that's probably why you clicked on this video. Let's start off with one of the most famous and bizarre tornadoes ever the 1997 Gerald Texas F5. This absolute monster of a tornado is very well known for mostly its sheer amount of destruction it caused. It started off as a little small rope tornado. The tornado became one of the strongest tornadoes known to humankind. The damage caused by the tornado was almost impossible to imagine as 38 homes in the Double Creek Estate Division were completely obliterated with pretty much nothing left behind but the bare concrete slabs of the homes. This type of stuff is classic F5 damage, but the thing that makes this one of the most powerful tornadoes in history is the amount of debris left behind which was almost none, surprisingly enough. This is because the tornado did not only have the strength of an F5 tornado, but also traveled at a slow 50 miles per hour and was 3 quarters of a mile wide making this tornado almost seem stationary, which gave the time for the tornado to rip up all the debris into bits and pieces, including large pieces of pavement from roads to be violently ripped out of the ground. Since the houses in Double Creek didn't have basements, this unfortunately and easily killed 27 and injured 12 in the division. However, it not only affected human life to a large extent, but also animals, where about 300 cattle were killed. A pretty similar tornado with the intense destruction was the Philadelphia Mississippi EF5, which was a part of the 2011 super outbreak. The entire outbreak dropped 4 EF5 tornadoes, but even though this one wasn't as catastrophic compared to most other tornadoes in the same outbreak, I wanted to include this tornado in the video for its extremely intense ground scouring. In case you don't know what ground scouring is, it is basically when a violent tornado is so strong it rips the ground. But the thing with this tornado is that it was so immensely powerful it carved two feet deep trenches into the ground and ripped the asphalt from roads. And this is pretty much the only reason why this tornado is ever mentioned in the weather community. But sadly three lives were lost from this tornado as it destroyed a mobile home with an additional six injuries. So what happens when tornadoes like this happen in urbanized cities? Well, on May 3rd, 1999, that is exactly what happened in Moore, Oklahoma. An outbreak in central Oklahoma formed multiple supercells, including one in the OKC Metro, which was the parent supercell for probably the strongest tornado ever recorded. Just to show how dangerous and strong this was, the first ever tornado emergency was issued at 6.57 p.m. and reported some of the highest wind speeds from a tornado and in the world ever recorded at 301 miles per hour by Doppler on Wheels research radar. However, tornado wind speeds aren't official, meaning that the highest official wind speeds on Earth goes to Cyclone Olivia. But discussing this opens a whole new can of worms that I will not open. Since the tornado tracked through an urban city, it stole the lives of 36 people and injured 583 others. Unfortunately, this will not be the last time this area receives another tornado like this, as in 2013, the world record for the largest tornado ever happened just south of the city of El Reno, Oklahoma, which is only a few miles away from the OKC metro area. Surprisingly though, this tornado was only rated as an EF3. This led to a lot of controversy, and it's pretty obvious, because I mean this tornado was 2.6 miles wide which left a noticeable scar on the earth and a world record. It also recorded wind speeds of 296 miles per hour, 
So why the rating? Well, we need to remember that the Enhanced Fujita Scale looks at damage reports and not overall power of a tornado. So because this tornado mostly went over open fields, this tornado didn't really have the chance to show its true colors and had a missed opportunity. Therefore, the few structures that hit only sustained the F3 damage. Even though this tornado missed urban land and didn't do much damage, the same could be said for the four storm chasers and four other innocent human beings that were lost from this event. Before we completely leave the topic of high wind speeds, an honorable mention is the 2011 Piedmont El Reno EF5, and of all places this happened, it happened in the same area. Anyways, wind speeds from this tornado were also around 300 miles per hour, just like Moore and El Reno. So far, we discussed tornadoes with unbelievable amounts of power, which is the whole point of the video. The thing about them though is that they were the only ones with this kind of strength in their outbreaks for the most part. But what if multiple tornadoes shared this same power for one single outbreak? If you want to know, then we would have to go to southern Kansas in the late night hours of May 4th, 2007. This is possibly one of the strongest outbreaks to ever occur, but the rest of the outbreak was understandably overshadowed by the Greensburg EF5 which destroyed an unfathomable 95% of the town, resulting in 11 deaths and 63 injuries. And to be honest, that's surprising, especially for the time of day this happened. We can just thank meteorologist Dave Freeman for the low death count. Even though Greensburg was the only EF5 in the outbreak, it sure wasn't the only one with the strength of an EF5. About 30 tornadoes were a part of the outbreak, and all of them but four were only EF0 and EF1s that didn't do much. It was these ones that caused the most problems. The tornadoes from the supercell are believed to be just as strong and possibly stronger than the Greensburg tornado. Since these ones didn't directly impact any towns, the rest were given EF3 ratings. They kind of have the same store as the El Reno tornado, but overall, the outbreak brought 13 fatalities and 66 injuries. Every tornado we went over is from the central U.S. where tornadoes commonly occur, as the western part of the country and North American continent don't regularly get tornadoes. It doesn't mean that they are completely non-existent, as most know, and do happen from time to time. But never any strong tornadoes, like EF4 type of strong. Yes, but except for one time. On July 21st, 1987, a rare meteorological event was in place as the supercell started off near Salt Lake City, Utah of all places. The storm moved into northwestern Wyoming and at 1.28 p.m. dropped the strongest tornado west of the Great Plains. This tornado was an amazingly 1.6 miles wide and traveled 24.3 miles in the Teton Wilderness area as an F4 tornado. Another thing to keep in mind is that this tornado at one point was over 10,000 feet above sea level, making this the fifth highest tornado to ever touch down. Thankfully, no one was harmed and only some people actually got to witness it. But for about a million trees, that's a different story. Famous meteorologist Ted Fujita came to survey and study the tornado's damage after it happened. He gave the tornado an official rating of F4 with the tornado's rating being highly based on tree damage. Some reports of the tree damage came from Engelman spruce trees, where some of them had been debarked, tipped over, and even ripped out from the ground. There was also even some topsoil ground scouring too. If this tornado happened in Tornado Alley, people will most likely look at it as another dangerous F4 tornado, but not worthy enough to belong on this list. But since it happened in the Rocky Mountains, it deserves to be in this video. Now we can't talk about any of these events without at least mentioning the 2011 Joplin EF5 tornado. This is a very well known tornado, especially in the weather community, which definitely makes sense because it's just like the 1999 Moore tornado, but on steroids. Anyways, on May 22nd, 2011, just days before the Piedmont El Reno tornado, and weeks after the super outbreak, another outbreak was in place, but was rather small. 
Just don't let that fool you, because it was the one to drop the costliest tornado in U.S. history. As most everyone knows, this was one of the worst tragedies in American history, mostly because Joplin is a very densely packed urbanized city, and when high-end tornadoes just like this hit major cities like Joplin, it isn't like Parkersburg, Iowa or Greensburg, Kansas, where they need to rebuild the town, because this is a huge city they have to rebuild with more affected people. By the time the tornado ended, 158 people were killed and 1,150 others were injured. It also carved a very noticeable scar in the city that's still there to this day, and all the damages from this tornado had rounded to about $2,800,000,000. Due to inflation, that would cost about $3,788,000,000 in 2023 currency.